Hi, this is the first video in a large series where we'll attempt to make a large copper compound collection in the end. In this video, I will focus on the synthesis of anhydrous copper chloride and sulfate. Dehydration by heat is a very convenient method of making anhydrous salts. But this process doesn't work for a lot of transition metals. Instead, such salts decompose to oxides, hydroxides or oxyhalides. For copper though, dehydration by heat works very well for a lot of dehydrated compounds and you get pure anhydrous salts very easily. Anhydrous copper chloride is useful as a catalyst for a large variety of organic transformations and also for the synthesis of various water sensitive complexes. The preparation is very simple. First I get an Erlenmeyer flask and put it on a hot plate. Then I add 5 grams of copper chloride dihydrate, turn on the heat and wait. As the hydrate salt reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it starts to lose water slowly, turning into a brown powder. It is best to crush up the copper chloride beforehand, so no water gets trapped inside of big chunks like in my case. When I shake the flask and the anhydrous salt touches the water, it immediately turns green or blue. The blue color stems from dehydrated salt, or from hexa aqua copper 2 ions in which the water molecules arrange themselves around the copper atom in an octahedral shape, which you can see modeled on the left. The green compound, on the other hand, forms with large concentrations of chloride and is due to tetrachlorocuprate anions. These have a tetrahedral structure with four chloride ligands surrounding the copper atom. Now I wrap the flask in aluminum foil and wait until all the water has evaporated. After 30 minutes, all the water is gone and the preparation is complete. The anhydrous copper chloride is a nice, free-moving, chunky brown powder. I transfer everything into a vial and seal the lid with parafilm because anhydrous copper chloride is very hygroscopic and will form the dihydrate when not stored airtightly. The final yield was 3.82 grams, which is 120 milligrams shy of quantitative, due to some of it getting stuck to the walls of the flask. Equally easy is the synthesis of anhydrous copper sulfate. For that, I add some copper sulfate to a beaker and crank up the heat. As the copper sulfate heats up, it dehydrates through two intermediates. The original dark blue compound is the pentahydrate. This, at about 60 degrees Celsius, will decompose to the trihydrate, which has a slightly lighter blue color. At 95 degrees Celsius, the trihydrate dehydrates further to the monohydrate, which is slightly teal in color. To completely dehydrate the monohydrate takes the most effort and you need to heat the solid up to 220 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the teal monohydrate completely dehydrates and forms the colorless anhydrous copper sulfate. The anhydrous copper sulfate is quite air sensitive and will slowly convert to the monohydrate when left on air. Now let's see what happens when we add water to the anhydrous copper sulfate. Immediately, the blue color returns to the compound as it is rehydrated. Also, the water starts to boil due to the large amounts of energy being released by this hydration process. For copper chloride, I will do the demonstration with the remainder of the anhydrous salt in the reaction vessel. As I add water, you can immediately see the blue color of the hexa aqua copper 2 ions in solution. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. And as always, thanks for watching.